Hey folks, welcome to the Budget Outdoor Adventure Channel. Today we're gonna to be going over the 10 essentials, the 10 things that you should have in your pack anytime that you go into the outdoors to keep yourself safe and secure. Now the whole goal of this channel is to show you how to get outside safely and have fun, but still be able to do it on a budget. So if that kind of stuff interests you, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we got a lot more cool stuff coming your way. We even have a video that's gonna be coming out real soon showing you how you can get all this stuff, all the 10 essentials for about 10 bucks. So let's jump into it. Now what the 10 essentials are, like I said, are the 10 things that you should have with you. Now, I believe there's actually more than 10 essentials, and depending upon what list you look at, the 10 essential list changes a little bit. So I'm going to show you what I recommend, the 10 essentials that I recommend, and then the couple extras that you may need depending upon your situation. So let's jump into the first essential. All right, so the first on the list here is navigation. You notice first, the uh, elephant in the room is I've got a phone here, and a lot of outdoor courses you'll take will tell you never to rely on your phone, and I'm going to tell you why that's both good advice and bad advice in just a second. Now, the bare minimum for navigation is a map and you can pick up maps at any ranger station AAA. you can even download them online so you can get these for even free now you notice here i keep my map in a ziploc bag and the reason for that is paper gets wet and paper gets damaged so you want to keep your map safe now with a map you also need a compass now here i have the bare minimum of a compass it's right here on the back of this guy i do recommend actually the silva style compasses and i will have a video on how to orientate a map and use a silva style compass coming up on the channel so hit that subscribe button but let's talk about the phone now, most people tell you not to use a phone because they think it's cheating, and maybe it is, maybe it's not, but it's basically a GPS unit. And the same people that'll tell you a phone is cheating will also carry a $300 GPS unit. So is it really cheating? I guess that's up to you. Now, the big downfall of phones is that they need cell signal to work. Now, a lot of people say you need cell signal for GPS. That's not true. You need cell signal for your map. And you can actually download offline maps onto these phones, and then you can use this thing completely offline. Now, the other issue with phones are batteries. Batteries die. So if you're going to rely on a phone, I would carry an extra battery like this and a cable just in case your phone dies. And also do something to protect your phone. Get a decent case for it because if it drops and breaks, now you're out of luck. Now I do subscribe to the two is one, one is none analogy, which means if you only have one method of navigation and that method fails, be it your phone or you lose your map, you're out of luck. So you're better off carrying two, especially in this case. So you're, if you're relying on your phone, also get a paper map. So that takes care of navigation. Let's move on to the next one. So the next essential is flashlights. And I have three different examples here. These two take regular AA or AAA batteries, and this one is rechargeable. Now you'll see a lot of places will have these giant tactical flashlights that take four D-cell batteries and you can whack someone over the head with it. And for what we're doing, that's not necessary and I don't recommend them. You need something that's light and you can put in a pack. Now this one is even smaller. It's extremely bright for its size. You can see right there. And it's got a neat little clip. You can clip it to the bottom side of a hat. So that's really handy if you're having to do mapping and whatnot and also use a flashlight. This one also has a feature where you can set the front LED to red, which is great if you're doing anything at night. Now, another thing that these do offer is a little bit of signaling. You can see if it's at night and you're trying to get rescued, these do help you. And we're gonna talk about signaling devices a little bit later in the video. Our next needed item is sun protection. Now, the bare minimum, obviously, is some decent quality sunscreen. Um, I would get something that's waterproof because it will stick on a lot longer, especially if you're outside and you're in, you know, crossing creeks or rivers and things like that. Protecting your head is very, very important not just for the sun, but also for your eyes. So I would recommend getting a hat, something with a brim, and you can even get ones that cover your ears. Those are great too. And the something I like to carry, mostly because I'm pasty and white and burn easily, is I like these sun shirts. These have an SPF rating on them. Um, so these do a great job. You can put them on and these will keep the sun off you. Another thing to consider is sunglasses, of course, because you can actually sunburn your eyes and you definitely don't want that. So that's kind of your basics for sun protection. There's other things depending upon your needs that you can pack in there as well. Next up is food. If you get stuck out for a couple of days or even an overnight, you're going to need some calories. So I would look for things that are protein dense, calorie dense foods. And here, you know, I've got kind of your basics in here, your granola bars, you know, things like this. The one thing I would recommend is, again, going back to that kind of the tactical flashlight things, you'll see a lot of kits that come with these things. It's this big, and it says it's got 9,000 calories in it, and it's super calorie dense, and it tastes somewhere between a piece of 2x4 and cardboard. That's great, and those will get you through, but if you're in a situation where maybe you broke your leg and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're waiting for rescue do you really want to be eating something that tastes like cardboard or would you rather have some chocolate so bring something that you actually want to eat 
and bring enough, not just enough for the planned outing, but enough in case you get stuck out longer term than that. And I like to keep it all in a bag like this. It keeps it organized and it gives you a place to put your trash when you're done. So next is some good old high quality H2O. Now the bare minimum obviously is you wanna carry a water bottle and you don't wanna carry just enough for what you think you'll need. You wanna double that just in case something happens and you get stuck out longer. So I always carry a water bottle and a lot of times I carry a Camelback. Those can carry up to two liters of water. I got an image of that somewhere here on the screen. Now I always also carry a life straw. These are great because this is an easy way to filter water if you run out and need more. Um, the life straws have a carbon filter inside it and it filters out all the nasties like Jardia. That's something you definitely don't want. And uh, I'll have a link down below if you want to check out what Jardia is, but it's not a good time. <clears throat> These ones, you put this end in your water source, you put this end in your mouth and you suck through it just like a giant straw and you get nice filtered water. Now you can step up your game a little bit by going into something like this. This is a Sawyer water filter. This is one of my favorites. These are great and they're actually very affordable, especially compared to what water filtration cost just a few years ago. Now the big part of this thing is the actual filter. And what's nice with this is you can take it and screw it straight onto a water bottle. So you can dip your water bottle in a stream and pull water right through it. Now it also comes with these bags. You can fill the bags up with water and squeeze and then push that into your water bottle and filter water. These are great if you're going backpacking and you know you're gonna be having to filter a lot of water. It's a lot easier than pulling water through a straw. Now the easiest low buck option is this. These are iodine tablets. Um, I like these as a backup, but I don't like them as the primary, mostly because the water tastes a little bit funky, but it's basically a uh, sanitizer that you can put in your water after you pull it out of a stream or a water source that makes it safe to drink. Now the next thing is clothing, and you're looking at this going, why do you have aluminum foil and a trash bag sitting out for clothing? And that's because the clothing is going to depend upon what you're doing. If you're going into a cold weather environment, your extra clothing might be something like a big heavy jacket and gloves. If you're going into a hot weather environment, it'll be something totally different. But either way, I always carry these. Now this is a, they call them these space blankets. This is like mylar. You can wrap yourself up. You wind up looking like a baked potato. And this does a great thing. It keeps heat in or it keeps cool out depending upon what you need it for but it's a great way to insulate yourself the trash bag does the same thing you can cut a hole in the top of it and make basically a poncho um, and then the bivy sacks are kind of a glorified version of these now you'll notice this one's camouflage and i don't like camouflage because if you're using something like this you're lost you're hurt you want to be found you don't want camouflage they do make these things in brighter colors make them easier to be found so uh, let's jump into signaling next because this stuff can also be used as signaling, a way to alert people. You can use it as a way to flash things, but let's look at some signaling options. Now there's actually a lot of different ways to signal. Um, these are kind of the basic ones. So these are the ones I'm gonna show you. The first one is a whistle. Everybody, no matter what, should have a whistle on them. A lot of backpacks actually even have whistles built into the straps, into the little clippy part. So take a look, you may already have one, but the universal I need help signal is three whistle blasts. So everybody, no matter what, should be carrying a whistle. Now this whistle also has the benefit of a kind of a cheap compass on top which is marginal and it's got a waterproof container you can put matches in we'll talk about that in a second the next thing is a mirror now if you've ever played that game where you take your mirror or your phone or anything like that and you do this with it and you kind of blind your friends that's the whole point of a mirror now if you've got people looking for you whether it's by helicopter or other hikers on a ridge further away you can use these to basically glint sunlight off of it and get their attention these are very very effective and we're going to have a video real soon on how to use a signaling mirror because this is useless unless you know how to use it I also always carry a radio with me and I set these radios to the local ham frequencies. Now to operate on a ham frequency, you do need a ham radio operator's license. However, if you are in a life threatening situation, you can legally transmit on a ham frequency without a license. Uh, you can also transmit over the CB frequencies, depending on what kind of radio you have. So that's a great option. I don't have my phone here. I don't recommend relying on a phone for signaling, but it's always something you can use in a pinch. A pointer for phones and signaling is if you're trying to make a phone call and you can't get out, try text message. Oftentimes text messages can get through when a phone call can't. This is the one people always like, it's fire and fire starters. Now you'll notice here, I don't have a flint and steel. I don't have one of those magnesium things. I don't have two sticks we can rub together. And that's because if you're at the point where you're rubbing two sticks together, you've, you've failed, you've already messed up because you should have had this stuff with you in the first place. Now going back to the analogy of two is one, one is none, I would never just carry a lighter. I would never just carry matches. I would always carry both and I would carry quality stuff. This is a cheapo lighter. It doesn't work that great, but it gets the job done. 
This is a more expensive lighter. These ones are windproof. And if you're gonna get a lighter for this kind of a situation, I would always get a windproof lighter. You can see here when you light them, it's a little breezy right now. You can't even see the flame, but it's there. If you're gonna go matches, get waterproof matches. These matches can actually burn underwater. We've played around with them. You can light them and stick them in a cup of water. They will keep going. They can be soaking wet, they'll still light. Now these two things are fire kits and I have a whole video on how to put together a fire kit and we're gonna have a whole video on how to start a fire real soon too. So check those out and hit that subscribe button because they'll be coming out soon. Now this is a full kit. I got on one side matches and a striking surface and on the other side, when you open this guy up, I've got cotton balls. And you go, why cotton balls? Well, if you take a cotton ball and put some Vaseline on it, these things burn like crazy and they'll burn for a very, very long time. And that Vaseline is petroleum jelly, so it'll burn even if it gets wet. So that's a fantastic way to make a little fire kit. If you have your matches separately, I've just got a single tin here, same idea. It's got some Vaseline and cotton balls. So let's talk about knives for a second. And while we talk about knives, let's first address the elephant in the room, which is this big one. Um, this is what's sold at a lot of sporting goods stores as a survival knife. Um, you can pick these up for 15 or 20 bucks. You can see it's a pretty big knife. It's intimidating looking. You make it look, makes it look like you're Rambo. It's got a little thing in the uh, handle here where you can put more supplies. All that being said, and it even has got a little compass. All that being said, I hate these. Um, these are terrible knives. I would never recommend somebody buy one or carry one. I bought this thing just so I could show people what not to buy. The reason is these things are made like trash. The steel is very cheap, brittle steel. And you'll notice it's actually held in with an Allen screw, which means that's as long as the blade is. So any real work on this thing, you're gonna break it. These are also unwielding and they're hard to use. So let's get that completely out of the picture. Not a fan. If you wanna go with a straight knife, basically a knot folder like these guys, this is my favorite. This is a Mora, and Moras are very inexpensive. You can pick these things up for between five and 10 bucks. They are made in Sweden with Swedish steel, carbon steel. They're very good, very strong, and a great, great value for the money. I've got a link for all these down in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Next up would be what they call a multi-tool. Multi-tools are real handy. They've got pliers and all sorts of stuff on it. A lot of this stuff you may never need, but it is nice to have. The downside of these is they are a little bit heavier and a little bit more expensive. This is more your traditional Swiss Army knife. It's got some couple blades in here and people kind of like it because it's a multi-tool, but really, do you need can openers and bottle openers when you are out camping? Maybe you do, but I personally don't really carry one of these. I usually carry something like this. This is a basic folding lock blade knife. The blade locks in place, so it's not gonna fold up on you as you're using it. Now this is a very inexpensive one. This is an Ozark Trail. I picked this thing up on sale for like two bucks as a backup kind of knife. And this is one of the ones that I carry most of the time. This is a Kershaw. I'm a big fan of Kershaw knives, and it's because Kershaw knives are a great kind of balance between value and quality. You can pick up a really quality Kershaw knife for not a lot of money. So I've got a link to some recommended Kershaw knives down in the description below as well. One of the last things on the list, but probably one of the most important, is a first aid kit. Now you can pick these things up ready to go and put together, but I usually like to put my own little spin on them and put the supplies in it that I think I'm going to need. So I'm going to show you the inside of this one. Now when I'm putting together a first aid kit, I like to start with a good package here because you can keep everything well organized. When I set them up, I always have it so the most basic needs are when you open it, which that would be gloves. And that's because if you're working on somebody else, you want to protect yourself and a tourniquet. I love these tourniquets. A lot of times I actually carry these on the outside of my pack because if you're in a situation where you need a tourniquet, you don't want to waste the time trying to find it. Now my first aid kit itself, I keep it very well organized. You can see here I have pouches and I even have them labeled and that's so I can find things. When you're in that kind of a situation where you're helping somebody, you're helping yourself, you wanna know exactly where everything is. And I also always keep a first aid CPR kit. This is a face shield. And I keep that on the outside as well, just as an extra layer of protection if I've got to work on somebody else. Now I will have a whole video on how to set all this stuff up on your own. So check out the description below. As soon as we have that video up, we'll have it for you. Now I had mentioned that I think there are more than 10 essentials and that's because I do think there are more than 10 essentials. This I guess you would call your 11th essential um, is depending upon where you're going, you may need other stuff to think about. And this is the pack that I bring me, with me when I'm mountain biking. And in it, I've got some other supplies. Now, one of the things I always carry when I'm mountain biking is a little bit 
more robust of a first aid kit because if you crash, you're gonna get a little bit more hurt. But I carry in there also an inner tube patch kit, a tool kit for the bike itself. And then in my big compartment here, I always carry an extra inner tube. So depending upon what you're doing, think about what you may need because that's kind of your 11th essential. Now there's a 12th, I guess you'd call it a 12th essential. And that would be if you have any sort of a medical need that requires medication, make sure you have enough in case you get stuck out for a day or two. And then of course, there's one more thing. And that would be your brain, all the stuff up here. So that's what this channel's for. This channel is to teach you how to use all that stuff that's in your 10 essentials kit or your 11 essentials kit or your 12 essentials kit, whatever you wanna call it. Now we're also gonna have a video coming up because I did talk about at the beginning how one of the big barriers to entry with all these outdoor skills is the cost. So we're gonna show you how you can put together a very basic kit at the dollar store for 10 bucks. 10 essentials, dollar store, 10 bucks. So if this video helped you out at all, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Uh, we do wanna be sure we're helping you out and giving you the info you need and let me know what kind of stuff you wanna learn about down there below as well. And of course, thanks for watching.